I nearly got carried away. There is a saying that goes that you can take the African sun from Africa, but you cannot take the Africanness from the African sun. Good evening and welcome to Southampton Hilton Hotel. My name is Africanus Anna, and together with my wife Patience, we are privileged to host the historic premiere Hampshire Ghana at 57 exclusive red carpet black tie dinner dance. Personally, I have been motivated by the lack of opportunity for Ghanaians living in the south of the United Kingdom to celebrate Ghana's independence day. I therefore considered it wise to organize this event and I trust that it will serve as a platform for networking among Ghanaians and friends of Ghana for Ghana's future development. And I'm happy to inform you that in attendance tonight is the right watchful, the mayor and the mayors of Southampton and also the honorable member of Parliament for Southampton, Test Valley, Mr. Alan White, among many special others. Stay with us and enjoy yourself. My lady, oh my lady, let us reason. Let's come together as one. Unity, strength, and teach the children how to learn. But they are the future. Let's live together and make our work like paradise. Think of it, my lady, oh Hi. Welcome to the first ever Ghana Independence Celebration in Hampshire. Um, this is the first ever event like this being done in Southampton and it's being hosted by GDV, Ghana Diaspora Voice. Today with me I've got um, Reverend Emmanuel Abelteng. Welcome. Thank you very much. How do you feel being here? It is a pleasure and an honor to be here. I believe so much in exactly um, the fact that as our nation is growing, even when we are in a foreign land, it is possible that Ghanaians can gather together and be able to still pay homage to their roots. So it is a pleasure to be here. That's right. So do you have your dancing shoes on? I have my dancing shoes on and I'm ready to show a few moves of mine. I understand you're the master of ceremony. So is there anything that we should expect? Any jokes? Any... Yes, I believe uh, it will be a very interactive uh, event. Um, I am looking forward to being able to make everybody feel comfortable and feel very much at home. And there will be a lot of different things within the program itself that will add a lot of color to the program. But I certainly believe that you should expect a few jokes here and there. That's great. And with me, Mr. Frank Anderson. It's a pleasure to have you. Absolutely a pleasure to be here myself. And tell me, how are you feeling? I'm excited. Um, for me, wherever Ghanaians are gathered together in this country, it gives me, you know, inspiration to see how we can all network and, you know, tap into our own, you know, skills and competencies. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. That's right. You know, this is the first ever event like this to be hosted here in Southampton, Hampshire. Um, I, don't, I know, I understand that you're from London. Um, do you have regular events like this? Uh, oh yes, we, we do have a lot of events in London. Um, and it's exciting to hear Ghanaians in other parts of the UK organizing such uh, programs. I think it's quite important for us to maintain that network. And even encourage those in other parts of you get to do the same because it's only doing such programs we can you know organize ourselves into whether business enterprises or just networking for the sake of it it can only get better that's right that's right well um it, it, like i said before it's good to have you here um do you have your dancing shoes on i am really ready to you know we're gonna put this off in a minute after the speeches are done We'll take this over and have a good dance. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I must also commend the organizers. Uh, it's not easy to put up uh, these events. It's expensive, it's time consuming, it's frustrating. But at the end of it all, the joy of seeing people together, you know, networking is, is so exciting. Yes, yes. Um, and is there anything that you'd like to say to Ghana? any message you want to say to Ghana as Ghana is 57 this year? I want to tell my compatriots there are lots to celebrate in Iran. There are so many countries that wish they were Ghana. But unfortunately we tend to focus on the things that divide us more than the things that unite us. We've got to see positives in every situation 
and build on those positives. The message goes to the young people like us. The future belongs to us. And the way we prepare ourselves today, the way we harmonize our efforts is what determines how successful Ghana becomes in the League of Nations. And so, we are all in this together, we have to work hard. That's, that's a powerful message there. And before I make you go, uh, can I just ask a quick question? You're looking smashing tonight. Uh, which design are you wearing? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but, but, you know, the organizers made me aware it's going to be at a four-star hotel. I thought I'd be English today since we're coming to an English area. So, um, yeah, I'm sure I'll do it. Very good job today. Yes, <laughs> because it's typical for Ghanaians to wear kinte cloth at formal um, events like this. I wanted to, but um, I thought when I'm dancing, I'll have to be throwing the kinte. I'll be comfortable. I'll just get rid of this and that's it. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good evening. With me here is um, Avon. Uh, who is at the moment a PhD student at uh, Southampton University, is that right? Yes, that's right. That's right. And he's with his lovely wife-to-be, uh, fiancé, uh, is it Jimmy? Yes. yes. Jimmy. Now tell me, how, how do you feel being here today? Yeah, I mean, we feel very honoured, very privileged uh, to be here um, and to interact with other members of the Ghanaian community in Southampton. Um, and, you know, it's, it's always good when um, uh, all of us Ghanaians can get together um, and you know, get, uh, get, get talking, get interactive um, about different issues. And how, how about you, Jimmy? How are you feeling? Are, are you a Ghanaian? I am half Sierra Leonean and half Austrian, so I'm on the west, half west. Half west. <laughs> so this is your first uh, Ghanaian event to yes. attend, is it? What are your expectations? Uh, I'm looking forward to all the things that the program will entail, so mm -hmm. the different areas, the different talks, um, where the focus will be this evening. It's mm -hmm. nice to attend such an event uh, celebrating Ghana Independence Day, so I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Aben, have you been to any events like this before? Um, well, a few in the past, uh, but I think there's a special one because um, it's the first um, in the region of, of, of Hampshire. Right. Um, so it is very, very significant, it's historic, um, and I, uh, I, I think that everyone who attends you know, uh, will be excited. And of course, we're celebrating our Independence Day. Remembering the sacrifice and the fortitude of our forebears, um, the sacrifice that they, they, they put in in, in birth in Ghana. And so I think it's, it's going to be a great event and I'm looking forward to it. And what are your aspirations, you know, as, as a young Ghanaian? What would you hope that Ghana would bring in the future? Well, I want, um, I want to see my generation uh, deliver the promise that is Ghana um, to the rest of the world. I feel that with 57 years, a long time, we've come a long way, um, but that promise is still yet to be fulfilled in its fullness. Um, and I would like to see my generation deliver that promise that is Ghana uh, um, um, to the world and deliver fully our finding ideals um, um, to Africa and to the world. Well, Jemmy, you're looking beautiful tonight. Um, do you mind me asking who are you wearing? I love this scarf. It's written, I love Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I love Jesus Christ. That's right. right. Um, I'm also here for prayer. Um, well, the bag I have is Ghanaian, actually. The rest oh, of yes. it is, uh, I don't know the exact design of it, but it's a nice dress, so I got it. Uh, this is actually handmade in Ghana. Handmade, yes, wow. Yes. It is beautiful. I love this cultural cloth. fashion. I love the print. Yes, yes, yes. And Aben, who are you wearing? Um, <laughs> I'm wearing a, a, a Moss Brothers suit um, and tie um, uh, and a carbon clan shirt as well. Wow, you look, you, you look smashing. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I hope you've got your dancing shoes on and have a good night. Yes, thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Right, now I've got with me here Reverend Jenny Elliott and um, Alison Joyce. <laughs> um, now, Reverend Jenny is a uh, Reverend Minister of Shirley Warren Action Baptist Church. Um, she's a lovely lady and they've both been to Ghana. That's right. Can you, would you mind telling us what your experience was like when you were in Ghana? It was a very um, rewarding experience. Um, we saw some amazing sights, some of which were challenging, but what we also met was some very uh, 
dedicated people. We went over there with a particular purpose, and that was to um, help support the development of mental health services. And uh, whilst that might be a difficult thing to do, we actually really uh, met some amazing people who are, who are making a huge difference in the lives of people that are seriously challenged. Um, and we just, yeah, we were welcomed in all sorts. Uh, I, I just remember Tony. Do you remember Tony? And he was just so you know, warm and inviting. We met his family and his children. It was great. Yeah, I understand Ghanaians are quite a, a warm people. How did you find this, uh, Reverend Jenny? I found everybody warm and loving, uh, very interesting to, to talk to. And one of the things that I will remember is the breadth of poverty right over here and wealth right over there. And there seemed to be very little in between. Um, it certainly touched my heart. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> and what are your expectations of tonight? I think we just want to share the, um, you know, the joy and, and the sort of like the hope for the future. That's what, that's what I'm here to do, is just to celebrate, really. Are we going to see some dance moves? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that will be interesting. We'll dance for you. You <laughs> will. That's good. We'll wait to we'll wait to see that. Um, I just want to say you're looking beautiful, the two of you. Um, would you mind telling me who you're wearing? If you know the designers. No idea. No idea. I'm wearing crazy tea. <laughs> Certainly, it is an honor to be here. My name is uh, Pastor Emmanuel, and I will be your MC for this event. Most of you are aware that this evening is a very special night indeed. 
And on behalf of GBV, I welcome all of you to this wonderful occasion. It is an opportunity for us to be able to truly celebrate something that is very unique to a lot of people in this place and a lot of people who are out of this place. We all realize from the drums, it indicated that somebody very important has just joined us, the mayor of Southampton, Mr. Ian. Why? So can we do please? <laughs> it's actually joined by his wonderful wife, the mayoress, Mrs. White. Can we please <laughs> applaud? <laughs> let us be on our feet and then we will take the national anthems and after that I will continue with the introduction. Can you please be outstanding? Seven years ago, a gentleman rose up in Ghana and said, I want to see a new Ghana. And he was ready to do all his best to fight to see that come to pass. And that brought us the first independence within the African continent. And after 57 years, we can actually celebrate it. I mean, we have no idea what we are doing here today and the impact it will have in many, many years to come. But I believe it is good for us to dare to dream that we can bring change. Just the knowledge that we've had the mayor, the mayoress here, and the MP here is an indication that there is every level of confidence in the ability when people make a decision to do something great. Yeah. And that is a wonderful opportunity. All of this, just applaud them for taking time to be here. And that is great. I would carry on to introduce the dignitaries that we have amongst us. And please, if you would be kind enough for us to give the honor to those who honor is due. I also want to take this opportunity to introduce the honorable member of parliament for Southampton, Mr. Alan White. Can we all please? as Mr. Frank Anderson, who is a managing partner of LFDP Limited. Can we all please? <laughs> yes, and last but not the least, is a gentleman that I have come to know, respect, and I've truly been inspired by what he's doing. He's none other but than the host and producer of the Ghana Diaspora Voice, Mr. Africanus Anand. As 
those of you are aware, it is actually GDV who is actually hosting this evening's event, and it is truly an honor to actually be here. Then, at last, but also equally important person here who we all need to acknowledge happens to be yourself. So, can we all please give a wonderful applause? Some four years ago to see how 
we can bring Ghanaians together. There are three key things that are important for national development, i.e. human resource, finance, and technology. That is what Africa needs. And so we try to find Ghanaians that are doing well, you know, career-wise, business-wise, and see how we can all leverage, you know, our skills and competencies to better our lot. And I came across Mr. Ayan, who started this great initiative. Now, he wanted to be telling the Ghanaian story. You don't hear that anywhere. And it's so unfortunate for us, as people of African descent, that we tend to focus more on the negatives or the things that divide us than the things that unite us. And so until we begin to appreciate that we are all different human beings, and we can only do better by bringing ourselves together, building on the positives, we'll keep marking time. The world is not waiting for us. You are in the United Kingdom. If you read the history of our United Kingdom, the extreme partisanship we see in our country, Ghana, it hasn't happened yet. And so that is how we met and we decided to leverage uh, the opportunity. For GDV in particular, the, within the short period of time, it has expanded. I mean, I, I'm aware, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, meeting the Minister of Foreign Affairs, meeting the various sector ministers, the Ghana High Commission, and it's so unfortunate the High, the High Commission is not here yet. They would have told the story of how far this organization has come. But for me in particular, I'm so excited this is happening in Southampton, and I want it to be replicated in all other parts of the United Kingdom. The last time I checked the 2011 census, there were 93,000 Ghanaians in the UK. Now that tells a lot. So we begin, we have to begin to network. We have to begin to, you know, work together. And most importantly, we are in the United Kingdom. We have to also understand the need to work to develop the communities in which we are, get involved. I'm sorry I have to say this, but more often than not, we're too reserved from getting involved in the society in which we belong to. Back in Ghana, you're free with your neighbors. Even when you're walking the street 100 yards, everybody knows you. But we tend to be very reserved. Open up, talk to people. Until you start speaking with people, you cannot build a relationship with people. So that's all I want to share with you this evening. But in particular for the GDP on the way forward, you are the best people to tell the story. If you leave here tonight, call a friend in Portsmouth, in Bournemouth, in Windsor, Winchester, wherever. Tell them the story. We're not just here to eat and drink and just move away. We want to leave this place with a story to tell. Okay, together we can make it work. Thank you very much. so well put and I think we can do better than that. Uh, I believe we have a lot of Ghanaians that are gathered here together and uh, the independence of our country is extremely important to us. But it is also quite true that our independence was actually gained from Great Britain and most of the institutions back in our country was as a result of some of the investments that were made when um, they were there. Uh, it's interesting, you can go to Ghana and realize that most of the things we do in Ghana, I mean, when we come here, it's pretty much the same, in the sense that our way of education, you know, our, what we learn at school and all those things, I mean, it is almost sort of formulated just after what we learn from Great Britain. And most of us have the unique opportunity to physically be in this country, and I believe we have the unique opportunity as well to learn. So it's really wonderful to see all Ghanaians, and I think we can just do a wonderful applause for ourselves that at least we can gather ourselves for an occasion like this to come together. I'm also going to invite Mr. Ebenezer Lai, the leader of JIDAC, who is going to give us a short presentation. Mr. Ebenezer Lai, can you please? Can we all welcome him, please? Mayor of Southampton, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Southampton, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure and a distinct honour um, to be here to address you tonight and I thank Pastor Africanus and the Ghana Diaspora Voice for organising this great event 
and allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight. We meet in an institution of hospitality noted for excellence, in a city noted for progress, and in a country noted for strength. And our nation, Ghana, stands in need of all three. We meet here today to celebrate, honor, and remind ourselves of the courage, fortitude, and sacrifice of our forebears, who brought forth on a supposed dark continent. We meet in an institution of hospitality noted for excellence, in a city noted for progress, in a country noted for strength. And our nation, Ghana, stands in need of all three. We meet here today to celebrate, honor, and remind ourselves of the courage, fortitude, and sacrifice of our forebears who brought forth from a supposed dark continent, a nation dedicated to the notion that the African can manage his own affairs and is the determiner of his own destiny. This was the most basic ideal of our founding. Since our attainment of independence 57 years ago, Ghana has come a long way. We have made progress in many key areas as a nation, but even more so, we have so much further to go. The truth about the state of our nation is that it is simply not where it should be. Too many of our kids still study under trees instead of a helpful classroom environment. Too many of our citizens lack access to clean, clean drinking water. Too many of our people die unnecessarily from curable diseases. Too many of our citizens still sleep in the dark at night. Too many Ghanaians live in unsanitary communities. Indeed, many Ghanaians have struggled to get access to the basic necessities of life for far too long. In, 20, in the 21st century, these things are unacceptable. In 21st century Ghana, these things do not belong. I, for one, am not satisfied with this state of affairs, and I doubt that anyone is here tonight. Like many young people of my age, my frustrations are heightened when I reflect on these things, and yes, I tend to moan and complain about it every now and then. Like most people my age, I want to see change, change that is tangible and transformative. President John F. Kennedy once said that it is better to light a candle than sit and pierce the dark. It is better to be the change that you want to see in your country and society. This is the reason why my colleagues and myself came together to start the Ghana Development Agenda Group. Now, the Ghana Development Agenda Group is a non-profit research-based organization comprised mainly of Ghanaian and other West African students studying at the University of Southampton who are passionate about development. We are dedicated to the planning and implementation of developmental projects across the length and breadth of Ghana. Our vision is to see a fully developed Ghana and our efforts will not cease until this has been achieved. The group is currently in the early stages of implementing a water project at Combine, a settlement in the eastern region of Ghana whose inhabitants do not have access to clean drinking water. The project plan has now just been completed and we are about to begin raising the funds needed to undertake the project. Our research puts the estimated cost of the project at around some £7,000. My fellow Ghanaians, I have always maintained that there is nothing wrong with Ghana that cannot be fixed by everything that is right with Ghana. I believe that the Ghana Development Agenda Group represents everything that is right about Ghana. It is a group formed by young people in their desire to make a difference and they have come together in absolute unity irrespective of their ethnic or political differences to pursue an objective that is in the national interest. This is so deeply reflective of who we are as a people. We care about our fellow man, and we come together to confront the challenges of our day. And in any given case, if there is anything that we can do to alleviate the suffering of our fellow man, then surely we have an obligation to try. That is the Ghanaian way. That is who we are. That is a part of the story of us. That is the nature of our enduring spirit which shall turn our struggles into a nation. The problems that we face today are not NDC problems. They are not MPP problems. They are not tree problems, they are not guard problems. They are Ghanaian problems and require a full Ghanaian response. For our, our destinies are stitched together as those three bands of color and the black star that light up our flag. Our nation is bigger 
and the sum of its very parts. And out of many, we are truly one. Just as that first generation of Ghanaians waged war against colonial rule, oppression, and gained independence, let us also in this generation wage war against poverty, lack, and disease to attain the benefits of a better country. Our days of standing pat and capitulating to our ethnic and political divisions must surely pass. Now is the time to begin the unified work of building Ghana in a way that reflects our national interests. So I ask you today to help us. I ask you to support us. I ask you to partner with us. Assist us to make a difference and be the change that we want to see. Help us bring clean water to the people of Combine. Many years from now, when the stories of this generation are written by our grandchildren, I want that story to say that we did everything we could together to pass on a Ghana worth inheritance. I wanted to say that we remade our nation to fit our larger dreams and we chose our better history. That through such endeavors, we achieved more for the country than we even envisaged. When our individual efforts far outstrip our collective challenges, then we would have made progress. Then we would have transformed our challenges into the tales of doers and overcomers. Great challenge is overcome with great effort. The greater our efforts, the greater our triumph. This is the task to which we set ourselves. And we ask for God's help in this, even as we do his work here on earth. God bless you, and may God's, God bless the realm of the free and the just. God bless God. That is, that is excellent. I am sure all of us agree. It is wonderful when young Daniel still care about what is happening back in their country. It's young, it is wonderful to see that because it's easy to forget your roots. And this evening is supposed to be a night where we are also gonna have a wonderful dinner and at the same time be uh, entertained very well to wonderful African drums and dance.
uh, who is actually going to share with us a little about GBV, which is the, the main organization that has actually put this uh, event together. He's the head of research. And uh, can we please invite him as he comes to give us a short presentation uh, on GBV? Mr. Latte, can you please? Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, all protocol observed. Well, as you are well aware, GDV offers a platform for all Canadians to be able to articulate their visions and plans that they have. So collectively, we can implement it in Ghana for the greater good of all of us. And it is in line with this that um, Mr. Africanus has organized this program to offer that platform and that opportunity. So I know that one of the reasons why we haven't succeeded as black people, if you consider our continent, if you compare our continent to any other continent, the African continent is the only one that in the last 30 years hasn't made any meaningful impact. And part of the reason is that we are unable to work together. We are unable to trade with ourselves. We are unable to believe in what we have. We always look without what we should look within. We always want to look out for solutions elsewhere when actually the solution is within. We have about 60% of the world's resources, natural resources, and yet we, we, we come begging the West to solve the least of our problems. And part of the reason why we have not succeeded is what I call having a mentality of brutality. Brutalizing anyone who is trying to succeed and brutalizing anyone who is trying to rise to the top. That is a major challenge we have in Africa. We don't encourage our own entrepreneurs. We don't encourage innovation in Africa. We don't encourage something that we can do ourselves. In Ghana, there is a man who has invented a car who has done so much. It has taken more than 30 years for this man to be recognized. Why does it take so long for us to believe in what we have? Why should it take so long for us to begin to do what we know we already have and work collectively for our common good? So GDV offers that platform. We have a mentality, we have that open-mindedness that we are not out there to brutalize anyone who wants to succeed. We are not out there to destroy anyone who seeks to do well. But we offer that opportunity for people to be able to work with us so that maybe 15 to 20 years from now, Ghana will be a place that we cannot be proud of because we've chosen to believe in ourselves. And one of the politicians I've always admired in history is Winston Churchill. He said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. And at a time when it was as though this country would be destroyed, because the enemy was advancing, he said Britain would never surrender. This small island was able to rise to that challenge because of that confidence they had in themselves. So GDV offers Ghanaian that platform. If you want to rise to the top, we are out there to encourage you. We want to see you, regardless of the challenges you have, that you are able to rise to the very pinnacle of excellence. And that platform is offered to anyone who is ready. So you can contact the leader, you can contact the research team. We are happy to share with you. So that one day, Ghana will be great, and we'll look back, and we'll be thankful. Thank you very much. From his right, the rightful worship, the mayor of Southampton, can we all please, with an applause, welcome the rightful worship, the mayor of Southampton, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm not quite sure what I can add to some of the most wonderful speeches this evening. It's been really quite inspirational to listen to people talking about Ghana, what you know, what you can do here, and what can happen. It is really quite remarkable. There's been some visionary speeches 
and I do wish you all the best in what you are trying to achieve here this evening. What I would like to say is here in Southampton, we have what we believe is a multicultural city. We welcome people from many, many races, and we have really quite a good record of integrating people of different cultures and races, races into our city, and we're very, very proud. And I hope that this evening demonstrates part of that. Um, and it is been really quite wonderful. I will say one thing, though. I did come to a function of the third day and the ladies were dressed in national dress. I see one or two this evening, and I'm quite disappointed because it really was fantastic to see the ladies dressed in national costume. Mm. Don't worry about the men, oh, they can come along with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ladies. And it is absolutely wonderful to see. We see, I see things differently because I see people wearing a national dress. And those, those things are not common to me. I've traveled a bit, I've spent many years in the Middle East. And so I've seen cultures, different cultures, coming together in one, one area. But it was not, I have to say, not many African cultures. So it is really, really wonderful. And I do wish you all the best for what you have to do. I would say one thing, somebody mentioned freedom of the city, the keys of the city. I would say, I'm not saying you could drive to Southampton 200 years ago, you could certainly ride to Southampton. And if you tried to get in the city, you would need a set of keys if you come late at <laughs> Because we locked it up. <laughs> it was a walled city, perhaps 200 years, maybe a little bit further. And effectively, you did need a key to get in and out. And so therefore, only those people that had done something special within the city were given a key. And uh, we still have one or two of those keys in, in the civic centre. So you were actually given a key. Uh, and you could come and go as you pleased, uh, shall we say, when the, the city was locked up. Because to be quite honest, to be out here late at night was not a pleasant place. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite difficult. So we do have a key. Um, but you are right. We now, we now give the key, or well, in fact it's called the freedom of the city, to people who have done something special in the city. And it's a very proud thing for people to receive that, and we're very proud that, that we've given it to many people and organisations over the years. But uh, I say I do welcome people. They'd like to see some of the keys of the game and some of the uh, scroll, well, not some scrolls, but the caskets they were given. They're quite fantastic. We're very proud of our history, and it's very obvious this evening that Ghanaian people are very proud of their history. I think you know some of the things, some issues. There are some issues. But I think what you are trying to do, as I said earlier, is to drive forward and make your country, which you are rightly are proud of, a, a wonderful place to live. And I do wish you best. And I hope that you will succeed in the coming years. Thank you very much. Uh, but the mayor has spoken so excellently. Now it is time for us to hear from the MP. Can we all please? With a very loud applause, welcome the MP. The wife is the Good evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great uh, pleasure uh, to be uh, with you this evening, and uh, thank you so much for inviting me uh, along to this, I believe, is the first uh, such occasion. And so I think my, uh, my first uh, suggestion is may there be many more.
key to get the stuff answered. Uh, and so you, you had to have a key on back of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> keys existed. But uh, a cautionary tale from a very long time ago uh, was that the then mayor of Southampton um, had uh, received a grant, a large substantial grant of money from the government. He was built in Southampton and hoping he would receive substantial grants of money from the government. And that day there was a grant of money from the government <laughs> um, to, to uh, build up the city walls around the, the, the waterfront. Uh, because there were city walls on the land side, there weren't any city walls on the waterfront. And the then mayor went and spent that money on high living and days out. <laughs> and then the French came up the Solon and sacked the bottom part of Southampton and sailed away again. And the mayor was arrested. <laughs> charged with what, he'd done, what had he done with the money and why hadn't he spent it on defending Southampton on the sea, seaward side. So, as we can see, it hasn't always been that we've had such wonderful mayors uh, stewarding our city in the past, but uh, this year is an example to us all. And, I, 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 and as we can see already, the French have not yet arrived. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to share with you was the, uh, um, I put my hand up earlier when uh, the question was how who has visited Ghana, well I visited Ghana, and the reason I visited Ghana, the occasion I visited Ghana was the African Cup of Nations. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we, I'll tell you who the we was in just a moment, we received uh, an invitation from the guy in Parliament uh, to play the Ghanaian Parliament at football. Uh, and the other part you need to know is I am the goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we received uh, an invitation which uh, we were delighted uh, to accept as the UK Parliamentary Football Team. Uh, we went out to Ghana, uh, I have to say mostly at our own expense, if anybody is writing us down, <laughs> mostly at our own expense. And uh, uh, not only played, uh, I was going to say superb going for it because um, I was obviously in top four. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Save a string of um, impossible to say shots, but we did in the end draw two all, so I did let a couple. But uh, uh, that was a superb occasion. We also had an opportunity to see not just uh, uh, the, the, the other side on the football pitch, but uh, uh, Accra, Ghana, coast, uh, uh, a whole range of uh, things. Uh, one thing I ought to add is that we did take some uh, football mementos with us, and a village about 30 miles from Accra to this day has not only a, <coughs> uh, a big bag of footballs and various other things, but about three or four Southampton shirts. Um, unfortunately, the village also has two or three Portsmouth shirts as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I think what I, what I want to uh, underline uh, with that little tale of my visit to Ghana was Ghana has just stayed in my heart from then onwards. It's a brilliant country, I think. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and I think it really is a a beacon to Africa in terms of what is happening in Ghana, where Ghana is going, what it is doing, how it is moving ahead uh, as a country. And I only saw a little bit of that when I was there in Ghana, but there is so much more, I think, to offer and to give uh, as far as Ghana is concerned. And if uh, some of that potential uh, can be assisted by uh, Southampton uh, and you in Southampton, to help Ghana on its way, and maybe help us on our way as a result as well. That will be a tremendous outcome this evening and from what is going to happen from henceforth. So, <laughs> I fear I am not going to be invited to play football in Ghana again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can barely walk to the other end of the football pitch these days, but um, that is something that did really stay with me. And, uh, the connection therefore this evening was I think it's especially uh, important and certainly I, I look forward to uh, perhaps meeting a number of you on future occasions 
uh, where things which maybe I can have a hand in helping these processes forward are taking place. And please be assured that certainly I'm at your disposal uh, if you need any assistance in those things for the future. Inspiring. That was indeed very inspiring and uh, quite humbling as well to know that somebody actually has been there and can speak about it with a lot of authority. That I have actually seen the land we are talking about, and it is certainly something that has stayed with me. So that is good. Can we please just do a really good applause? Now the mayor is ready to propose a toast. Can we all please just fill up our uh, our glasses and uh, we are all going to do this.